Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, waking up for a very early, a very snowy Saturday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. But as always, wishing you well where you might be in this world, whether you're, you know, waking up for a nice early morning with me and ready to have a coffee in, in Europe, or you're over there in good old America coming back from a late night at whatever <laughs> name, whatever, whatever great venue that we have over here. Anyways, getting a live scene as Bitcoin has done very little in the overnight session, but there are a few things to be speaking about with the inaction. Now, again, I always like to begin with the daily because really, you know, the daily gets rid of all the noise that we see on the lower time frames you know the bullshit time frames is what i is what i would refer to them as but essentially you see that 10 simple moving average that red moving average still gaining divergence away from that yellow 21 exponential moving average telling us that the pressure is still onto the downside now overall this is corrective in nature the volume characteristics of this are you know that nice orderly drop off in volume that i always speak about because well we've been basically doing the same thing for the last two and a half months now um and this is <laughs> just lower highs and lower lows the same thing that we've been doing for over over a year now but within the context of this current price structure this is you know likely to be a bearishly resolved consolidation why do i say that well again lower highs and just the overall volume signature of this guy and as you can see the volume signature not only that is telling us it's telling us that this that this pattern is is very mature and it's ready to burst at any given moment. In fact, you can see uh, on, on this trend line that I made. Which again, can you make trend lines on this? Does it need to be perfect? No. I'm just showing that it's tailing off, which signifies that the pattern itself is mature and ready to actually be resolved. So, which way does it get resolved? Well, you know, when you're in an overall bear market, I'm gonna always revert to the downside. And when the exponentials and simple moving averages look like this, when when basically all lower periods are trading below higher periods, that's not a good sign either. We can bring up our oscillators right over here, our, our, uh, our, our Stokes, our daily Stokes, still headed down with my settings. They were rejected from getting out of the bearish control zone. It just also in between that zone and uh, in the more critical zone, essentially not even able to get into the neutral zone. So this is, you know, again, once again, a bearish consolidation. ADI DMX signaling an actual short entry on the daily for the first time in a while. Um, not the not a picture perfect short. In fact, I would actually on second thought when I look at the DMI minus again, just waking up. So my eyes are still a little bit crusty, you know. Um, um, but the DMI mind is not necessarily above the signal line itself. However, you do see the ADX strengthening. So perhaps something to be considerate of um, if we actually do get a move, then we should get a full on signal out. Imagine uh, not only that, but the daily RSI uh, yesterday, we got another test, another rejection of the exponential. You know, that's again, just getting rid of all the noise of the lower time frames. in the lower time frames, you're going to think that or you might you might think that there's there's a breakout or breakdown at all fucking hours of the day and it's going to drive you crazy. It's going to give you gray hairs of which I have many and also in my beard, which is actually quite disturbing. Um, but, you know, looking at this guy right over here, we are heavily in the bearish control zone. This tells me that this is just a bearish consolidation oscillating between the extremely uh, ex extreme bearish control zone and also the neutral zone right over here ever since Bitcoin basically put in the bottom at uh, 32, 3100-ish 3, area that we have so far. So again, all these sorts of things are suggesting that this is, you know, more likely to be resolved to the downside doesn't mean that I mean, but that doesn't necessarily do it all the way. The price action way of doing this, which I put first and foremost, would be closing a daily dollar below this guy right over here around 3250 ish area. If Bitcoin can do that, then immediately I will be looking for lower lows. You know, we'll, we'll stock, we're, we will perhaps explore some of those ideas throughout this video. But um, let's while we're here, let's actually go over the two day and uh, in the in the weekly and the four day as those just closed or in the week will be closing tomorrow today we just sent another we just set another dildo in stone it is a nice doji dildo right over here very low volume on it again just in the overall context of this i read this as consolidation not even able to test the 10 simple moving average right over here but also what i can gauge from this is that if we actually take out the lows on this current two-day dildo that we just started um basically below 3360 ish area uh that will be indicative uh, that will be kind of like a first signal of continuations uh lower time frames it's probably going to you know equate to that as well let's go check out two days Stokes, which have actually snaked around. So we were which, so we were watching this yesterday, which we're hinting at across to the upside. But again, this is why you have to wait for actual confirmation. And with today's daily or with today's new two day dildo, it is not necessarily confirmed. And in fact, when you do have a rejection like this, it typically does have some nasty implications for price action. But again, first things first, price action. We can look for all of the clues, all of the all of the great clues in the price action here. But 
or sorry, in the indicators over here, but price action is what matters most. Uh, ADX DMI, again, given a short signal on, on this baby over here. Um, but it's, it feels like it's already getting faded, kind of like something like this over here when Bitcoin was essentially consolidated in this area, which is what we're doing right now. We are consolidating. This is, you know, likely a bearish consolidation as you do see that DMI minus dominant. Um, same thing on the RSI right over here, you know, except you can, we can gauge a little bit more as we did put in some hidden bearish divergence right over here and right over here, uh, with price action right over here, making a little bit of a lower high right over there. Uh, also to make it a higher high in the overall context of the downtrend and trending below the exponential on this guy. Very, very like very, very often do you see it come back down to the lower end of the bearish control zone um, after initiating some hidden bearish divergence, basically continuations divergence, which again, in the overall context of this price structure, <laughs> you know, just kind of building out that case. Now let's get to something new. We have actually something new on the chart, something that Bitcoin has done only one other time in, in its uh, in its in its full history. And this is it right over here. The four day dildos have been confirmed as a death cross. That is right. The green 55 cross on the downside of the purple 200. We that has just been confirmed as of today, February 2nd, by the way. Hey, happy February 2nd. Um, and uh, and yeah, below all major moving averages, this is typically not the best setup. You do see that the, tw the yellow 21 exponential moving average getting damn close to that uh 377 the blue the blue guy behind there and um again that is not a good setup at all whatsoever looking at our stokes right over here we will have confirmed a cross down in the stokes now there's actually more important things about this we can make a trend line on this we can you cannot you can certainly make a trend line on this and uh we can see that there's that there is very obvious resistance from getting even out of the more you know i mean the, the bearish control zone is like right around here where it starts so to be rejected on all you know on all four of these going all the way back to September essentially this is again telling us that this is a bearish consolidation putting the puzzle pieces together we can come up with these sorts of ideas now again anytime that this thing actually does cross down it does spell some nice doom drops for bitcoin i mean not not every single time i mean this this time over here was the was the break of six thousand this time obviously right over here was just like a five hundred dollar drop i mean just five hundred dollar drop now that's actually you know quite significant that's almost you know 20 percent um it's it's closer to 20 percent than it is 10. uh and then this guy right over here about the same thing this guy over here was a was about a two thousand dollar drop from eight thousand to six thousand then we had uh the ten thousand drop right over here from ten sorry 10,000 to uh what was it like six six thousand right over here so again uh being beheld in within the bearish control zone tells me that this is not only a bearish consol consolidation but with crossing down right at this region tells us that it's probably more ready than it is not <laughs> it's, it's 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 very very close is what i'm trying to say i do have a position right now um a very small position because i closed most of it when i woke up uh after seeing the price action it doesn't look like I'm going to get filled on the rest of my uh, position because I try. I, I was trying to, you know, re-up essentially. But I am holding a position right now, and I do have a small options positions as well, which is not going to be doing shit because it's it's not expiring anytime soon. Uh, but I will. I have to. Yeah, I probably will end up showing that. Um, Anyways, uh, let's go over to the weekly now because the weekly will be closing tomorrow, right? The weekly will be closing tomorrow and we have something very interesting right now. We have two competing factors. So first, I'm going to present the more bearish uh, scenario and that is essentially, well, you have... You have all major moving averages migrating below that critical 6,000 level. As long as Bitcoin is below 6,000, from a more traditional standpoint, that, that's kind of like the area where I look at as, okay, as long as you're below there, you know, you can always make the argument that we are still in a bearish market. Now, of course, there's going to be indications beforehand. One of the big indications for me is if Bitcoin can both open and close one of these weekly totals above this purple 200 exponential moving average. This has been governed on our lower highs ever since Bitcoin broke down to this more aggressive downtrend right over here. So if Bitcoin could both open and close above that area, I would actually probably even take some longs myself. Um, but as you can see right now, it's, you know, to, <laughs> rejected each and every time. Uh, now, now, yes, we are being governed by this 10 simple, which is, you know, it's not, it's pretty weak, right? Um, and the fact that Bitcoin is just being kind of like sheared off the cliff right there, not the best sign. Now, I'll raise, now I'll kind of actually point out the counterpoint to this because, you know, it's good to be all inclusive. However, I'm, I think my main ideas are probably showing, again, I don't trade my opinion. However, you know, looking at technical analysis, I would be uh, comfortable with some risk on the table. Uh, you look, I, I look at the red 200 simple moving average right now, and we are actually base. I basically count this as a test of this on, on the bottom side right over here. So to me, uh, if Bitcoin comes back down and closes below that red 200 simple, which is currently around 3,300 ish area, quite literally at 30 or is it 3,300? Yeah, 3,300. So about a, a little bit more than a hundred bucks away. Uh, I will 
that will also confirm to me that we are ready for the next big drop, most likely, um, which again, we'll get to a little bit later. I want to I want to cover the, the lower time frames first um, before that. But I did want to mention this, that I really don't like being short coming into the 200 simple mood average. But the fact that Bitcoin is really having a lacking of a lack of reaction around this area so far, thus far is not a good sign. Uh, technically speaking, this is kind of where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, 2015. Again, more of a testament to how, you know, young it was it needs 200 weeks to even, you know, put in one tick. So when you look at that area, it's just, it's just, you know, by the nature of it. So, um, so a lot of people trying to make relations between that. I think that that's like, it's, you're, you're doing things backwards, whereas you need to be, it's, I mean, in my experience to be, a, if you're going to be a trader, maybe not an analyst, but it's better to be re, uh, responsive rather than, rather than like <laughs> crystal ball-y. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, weekly Stokes over here. I think did just cross down as well. Again, another you know no, another just not so good thing. Yes, I can stay down there for quite some time when things are trending, and we are certainly trending, no doubt about that. Uh, ADI DMX actually sig uh, signaling the trend of strengthening once again to the downside a little bit. Uh, weekly RSI, um, not really doing shit. I mean, this is the lowest it's ever been in Bitcoin's history, I believe. Uh, is it? Is it? Let's actually confirm this because we can confirm it. Thirty five. Uh, I can't. I can't get a good read on it. Twenty nine, uh, twenty, just barely on twenty nine. No, it's actually on, on on the weekly. It is not, but on the monthly, it is. Anyway, speaking of the monthly, let's get now over here, and, and this will kind of wrap it up for the higher time frames. We just put in another monthly dildo um, uh, the other day, as uh, as uh, February has started and January has ended, and as you can see right over here, the monthly dildo has done something again for the f the first time it's ever done it in Bitcoin's history. It has broken the the green fifty five exponential moving average right over here. When that area breaks, typically speaking, what's the next target going to be? Well, down around here, around the 89, uh, right around 2400-ish range um, is where it's sitting right now. So we'll actually we'll actually come back to that number, you know, in the future. So remember that one. But overall, you know, looking at this guy right over here, this is a clear rejection of it. Um, technically speaking, I'd want to see it both open and close below that area. However, this is, you know, in the context of this price session, the way that it's being put in with this lower high and the reject from getting even around that high. I mean, I mean, it did get around that high to be fair, but it was rejected about 150 dollars on this monthly dollar right right over here um before moving lower well that to me tells me that we are you know this is <laughs> from a monthly's perspective this is just continuation um so again simplify with the higher time frames and, and they will and, and they will help get rid of a lot of the noise uh so i'd imagine if bitcoin were to actually and and, uh, and now i'm actually going to show the other side so if bitcoin actually were to get back above the green 55 exponential which is right around 36 69 ish area um i would actually not be <laughs> I, I would actually probably try to sell around there it, it might get a little bit above 3700 3750 whatever it might be but i i think i strongly believe actually that if it got anywhere around there that would be a phenomenal sell and i'm not saying that bitcoin's going to get around there in fact i'm going to show more things that that suggest that price action is is uh is more aggressively um and more immediately angled to the downside but hey if it did happen that would be a f I, I believe that that would be a phenomenal trade most likely uh again just because we're managing risk on it would be pretty damn easy from a monthly dildo perspective as you know you could just use the high of this dildo essentially 41 27 or so and such nothing nothing like too crazy there i mean you don't need to be fucking a trader with many years of experience to to figure that one out right um so overall this also suggests that Bitcoin will very unlikely be closing monthly dollars above this green 55 anytime soon. Um, and when I say anytime soon, I mean like, you know, it, I mean, these are monthlies, right? So it takes time, right? And time is just a very difficult thing to deal with. Um, as humans, you know, it's it just it goes slowly. It's too fucking slow, man. Um, <laughs> you know, I feel it myself. But anyways, that's that's kind of what this guy's saying right over here. We do have something interesting with the ten simple. And if Paul Tyler's listening, they are not fucking crossing right now, man. Uh, yes, I am bearish, but you know, I don't want to quite literally see things that are not literally there. Uh, ten simple is getting damn close to the to the yellow twenty one. Um, uh, you know, it's only happened one other time in Bitcoin's history right over here. But again, because it was like kind of on the younger side to me that, you know, less, uh, less, you know, less of a reaction right over here, although it kind of did have a little bit, very, very small. Uh, if it were to have it right over here, I'd imagine that would be the impetus for sending this guy down to, uh, to, to the, to the mid 2000s ish area. Anyways, go on over, or sorry, let's actually bring up the oscillators. Uh, monthly Stokes still headed down, still headed south, still gaining momentum south. They did not even converge on that last close. That's quite 
concerning uh, monthly RSI, uh, deepest it's ever been in Bitcoin's ever history on the uh, uh, telling us that the trend is really fucking strong to the downside. And uh, ADI DMX, funnily enough, the the DMI minus is not even dominant right now, which is really uh, actually just really interesting to me um, that even with all of this down, we have still not necessarily uh, even come back to this neutral zone right over here. The DMI plus is actually just getting back down below there. So yeah, let's go now back on over to GDAX and we'll do the lower time frame, starting with the four hour. And four hour is is confirming a lower high right over here. Uh, we are about to lose the 21 exponential, assuming that we close basically here or lower in the next hour or so. And uh, if I do plot this out a little bit more, well, let's actually, you know, let's actually do the horizontals first because that's that's the best way to be doing it. Put this guy right over here. Let's actually even put a fib on it as well. Uh, Beyonce loves this indicator. She loves putting fibs on shit. And uh, what do we have right over here? That's also the 786 Fibonacci retracement down around here. And again, I just want to spend a second while actually going through what's going on here because it's also giving insight into what the market movers are doing during this consolidation. Bitcoin puts in a nice low right over here, rallies up, phenomenal rally. Pops back down, 618 gets front ran right over here. What's our target going to be? A little bit above the 236. Okay, beautiful. Pops back down to the 618 once again. Gets picked up by the Botsy Algos. What's our target going to be? 382. Beautifully hit right over here. Pops back down to the 618. Where is our next target going to be? The 0.5. You can see that it's getting walked down. It's getting walked. It's just slowly being walked down. The bear market, just bear, just the bear market takedown is, is what I refer to it as. Um, and then the next pop down to the 618, well fails it fucking fails and we go down to the 786 now there's something actually very interesting if this is going to maintain its more bearish posturing then i actually don't want to see it get back above the 618 what's going to happen is 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 if these is is if the algos are really you know wanting to force this guy down is uh is they'll actually stop it right over here right around 3460 to 3480 ish area of which we've hit i believe uh right over here in this kind of a blocky territory um now, of course, this, the 786 needs to actually break for this to be confirmed. But if the 786 breaks before the 618 breaks to the upside, then I would say that's just the next kind of, you know, nail in the coffin saying that this consolidation is, you know, essentially ready to blow. Now, you will notice that the 886 down around here is basically our, our current low. So I do like that. You see the 886 show up a lot in Bitcoin's history, and, and we will actually go through that um, soon enough. But in the very low time frames, if we actually zoom in this just a little bit more and we bring up our oscillators right over here, four hour stokes are still headed up. So fair enough. Um, four hour RSI is just oscillating between the bearish control zone, actually kind of in a rising channel fashion, which uh, we can go through a little bit more. Let's bring up the six hour right over here. Sorry, I should note, I should denote on the four hour, the DMI minus is dominant and we are getting a strengthening trend. So that actually is a, is a sell signal in and of itself. But I think most of the action can be better defined here on the six hour the six hour stokes just are, are hinting at a fresh cross down which will be confirmed um in four hours and 58 minutes so it's, it's got a lot of time i mean bitcoin could <laughs> a lot a lot of a lot of things can happen in the next four basically five hours essentially but uh but as, as i see it right over here this is a rejection of this horizontal and a rejection of the yellow 20 minute expansion with follow through already on you know i'm not that crazy volume but we are creating a lower high on this guy right over here after this downturn right over here what the fuck does this look like oh my god Maybe it looks like some like this, some like this. If we actually do some trend lines on it, and I actually do like channels um, in Bitcoin. Uh, I don't like, I don't like, you know, most of the creature patterns, head and shoulders, you know, wedges, all that kind of bullshit. Uh, those are patterns that will mostly get traders wrecked, um, especially in cryptocurrency land. In in traditional lands, a little bit different. In forex lands, maybe a little bit different, but cryptocurrency lands, well, those those patterns are plain, are painted on the retailers to basically distribute on their fucking face. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, uh, you do see this area right over here. About to give the ten simples what it looks like do we have continuation off this we do um and again you know this is a bear flag a bear flag coming off of a little bit of a downturn right over here sorry a little bit of a drop right over there where would the mesh move be pointing down towards well let's zoom her back out oh and look at that right around that former low and remember this area is absolutely critical down around here as that is the area that if bitcoin actually breaks out on a daily it closes a daily below i immediately start looking for lower lows and in like deep into the 2000s most likely um and we're gonna go and we're gonna flush out that idea and just a second a little bit more but remember there's there's also still this guy very much at play the uh, the symmetrical triangle that bitcoin put in right over here right the symmetrical triangle that bitcoin basically put in um 
uh, what was it, you know, like in late December, early January, that has a measure move also down around here. So I like the good confluence between these two things. Again, doesn't mean that it's a done deal. Nothing's a done deal when it comes to technical analysis, as most analysts would have you believe. A trader will always tell you that, you know, it just increases the likelihood and we have to always know where this can actually be wrong. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the pile of wrecked traders who just, you know, you can have the best technical analysis in the world, but if you don't know how to manage risk, you're it's only a matter of time before you just wreck your account. It's just a fucking fact. Um, and like statistically speaking, it, it is a true, it, it's a, it is a truth. It is, a, it is quite literally a truth. Um, so yeah, you know, that's what I'm looking at right over here. Uh, do we have anything to be aware of on the 12 hour? That's just basically two, six hours in a row. Um, mm, not, I mean, we are kind of resting on a 10 simple, uh, not really seeing too much over here. 12 hour stokes are pointed up. Fair enough. I mean, I, that's a more positive thing than not. 12 hour jewel actually did. <laughs> 12 hour jewel gave a gave a long signal on the very bottom. Actually, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, yeah, right over here. So would have had would have had a nice trade if I took that. Um, did not take that. However, I don't really like taking longs in an overall bear market. But I will be happy to go back to neutral. But yeah, the jewel just fucking. <laughs> Getting it right once again. It's just the fucking jewel, I suppose. Um, two hour right over here. Two hour just gave up the 21 exponential. Kind of even putting in a little bit of a head and shoulders right over here. You know, very, 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 very small pattern. But uh, I mean, the measurement on that's not going to be anything crazy. It's just going to be pointing you basically down to the lower end of this uh, of this support right over here. But let's actually start putting on some other things. And, and let's let's now talk about why this is. Well, actually, let's let's actually, you know, do this out a little bit more. OK. All right. Um, and let's let's actually make this video a little bit more free flowing. OK, so what are we essentially making out over here now? Making out make out with the charts, baby. OK, so, you know, this descending trend line is governing our lower highs and this trend line right over here so far has one two kind of almost you might even call it three touches or maybe we're, we're about to get a third, you know, is, is our low is basically our holding our low. So what do we making a descending triangle, which Bitcoin has a history of making. I mean, you saw a massive one at 6,000 right over here, took about a year to resolve. Uh, and we're basically making one right over here, which I, am, I don't think is going to take a year to resolve, but it can certainly take its time, um, which, you know, I'm going to offer up, uh, I'm going to offer up counterpoints to what I'm about to present. But basically the descending triangle right over here, that upper resistance does come in around that 3750 ish area remember the green 55 exponential on the monthly that's kind of around where it is so if bitcoin were to pop back up to retest that area before likely resuming lower it does make sense with actually you know taking a stab at this area any be anywhere between you know 3650 and 3750 so how will i know that bitcoin loosens up on its more immediate bearish pressure well again if bitcoin goes back above the 618 and closes a dildo above there and even and even back above 3480 i would not want to be short i would i, I would maybe I, I would certainly want to be neutral maybe even consider along all the way up to about 3650 ish area not really too much edge on that trade only about 100 bucks or so or 150 bucks so not really all that much worth it but but, you know, again, just want to be very clear about that. For, by, by the same token, though, if Bitcoin does break this ascending triangle to the downside, which whether it happens now, whether it happens in a couple months, as this does have an apex, I believe, all the way over here. Yeah, in like April. Um, then the measure move off this baby again, I'm not there. This is not this is not come with a time component. We'll be pointing all the way down towards. Uh, you got to see it right over here. Yeah, down towards about what that same number, 2,400. Remember the monthly 89 that we just looked at? Well, let's see what else we can find. Again, going on over here to the Bitstamp chart, the big the big bad Bitstamp chart. And looking at our next blue box territory down around here, again, with the assumption that that, that that area actually breaks, which I do strongly believe it will break. It's just, you know, when does it break? Um, it's just like that 6,000, what everyone was saying, that's going to be the low. Uh, we, have, we have, again, the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here. Remember that number coming back into play. Not only that, though, that is actually where Bitcoin did about about in 2014. It has a history of, of, of actually playing off of it. Not only that, but we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines. We do have the measure move that we, did, that, that, that we just looked at. We do have the monthly 89. And then we also, if we put on the volume profile, have this area right over here of some massive nodes being thrown down, which, by the way, if Bitcoin, and we're going to now get into the next part of this or sorry and we we also have the 377 on the weekly but we'll get to whatever again does that mean that this area is going to definitely be the ultimate low it's it's guaranteed to be reversal point no it doesn't mean that at all in fact it it, it only implies that <laughs> it only implies that it's probably a strong chance of bounce for when it comes to actual reversals i am completely uh, not in the same mind as 
pretty much every other analyst that I that I hear try to try to be Mr. Crystal Ball predict it. I need to see a reaction. I need to see the response of price action. Then I can gauge that. Just like this area right over here, you know, technically it did kind of have a chance, perhaps. Um, but after you know, after seeing the reaction after a couple of weeks, it was very obvious that this was not going to be the low. Uh, it had none none of the markers of it. Again, I do I, I go through the full explanation on the long term analysis playlist. So check out that playlist if you want that. But to put it very very you know very quickly, uh, the time spent at the low was too much. The the percentage bounce off the low, uh, off the lows was not good enough. The volume on the lows was not almost non existent as far as I'm concerned when you measured in U.S. dollars. Uh, the MVT signal also not necessarily signaling a low and the historical volatility rank also not indicative of a low either um, amongst uh, you know amongst other things but those are the main things that i want to see and none of them hit none of them um so yeah i need to actually you know see what happens now if this area fails you know if, if we get the same thing at this area right over here then i start looking at 1869 right over here and then if that area fails and i join the super bears down around 1000 ish area so for now um that is quite interesting to me. We actually do have something to be aware of on CMEs over here. CMEs did close at 34.35, by the way. Um, anyways, let's get let's now get on to the discussion on why I think that this is actually kind of likely to happen sooner rather than later. So first things first, I'm looking at the volume profile right over here, and you'll notice that there is just nothing doing all the way from where we currently are on this on this higher value node right over here down to basically that mid 2000s area. Well. That's exactly the setup that we had at the 6,000 area right over here, where once we lost the 6,000 area, it was just a straight fucking flush down to the mid 4,000s, low 4,000s, essentially, um, before Bitcoin could catch a bid and then, you know, even slumped lower. So, you know, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that if this does happen, it's likely to happen relatively fast, but we can actually come, we can actually really um, explore this idea quite a bit more by bringing up and incorporating. Let me get uh, let me get rid of the volume profile right over here and, uh, and incorporating the good old historical volatility rank, which is what I like. This is, again, what I like to use it for. Um, uh, let's see right over here. Mr. Bally poor. It looks like a lot of people are liking this. So the kitchen wind of it. Um, but again, this is this is ancient technology from traditional markets. You know, volatility essentially is a mean reversion uh, oscillator that essentially goes over the past. It, it, it's like a mean reverting oscillator that uh, measures things against the mean returns over a period amount of time, over a period of time, something like that. Again, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it. Go Google it. It's the, the 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 Google dictionary definition probably not going to be all that helpful, but basically, higher volatility is in, essentially insinuates uh, an inflection point. Lower volatility essentially insinuates that consolidation is occurring, and we're you know again it's mean reverting, so it's likely to <laughs> it's likely to explode once again, indicating that a move's incoming. Now you can. See over here that Bitcoin is getting very low on this once again. Compare that with over here when it's flashing these colors. That's when it's extremely high, and you can see that that was you know the uh, these were nice bottoms right over here, right over here. You could have made nice nice plays off of them, and um, you know historically speaking, it, it does you know it does do a good job of getting these. Um, anyways, when it does more importantly, when it does get this low, and this is what I like using it for, um, and uh, and looking at this area right over here, especially the below this point one area. Uh, it does match up with some pretty damn big moves. This over here, when it got this low before, the, the last time it was this low on the four hour was actually the break, was actually the breakage of about 6,000 right over there. The time before that was basically the dump from about 7, 7,400 to 6,000 right over here. The time before that was the pump from uh, 6,000 to 8,000 right over here. The time before that was the dump of <laughs> the dump of 10,000 to 6,000 right over here. So again, you know, it doesn't tell you which way that things are going to be moving, but it does tell you that a move is likely incoming, and it's coming, and you know, it's it's it, that's kind of what it's saying right now. Um, again, remember go, going back to the beginning of this discussion, the the volume characteristics on this guy as well are also indicative of that of this consolidation being you know very mature and ready to explode. So. Again, also let's put that let's put this into context with the overall underlying market dynamics, which we can find over here on data mission. We have gained more longs. More people are longing right now. Once again, we are we are above thirty two thousand open longs. They are paying a decent rate. This is certainly not low. It's not super high, but it's definitely something to something to keep in mind. You're gonna be paying a few thousand dollars to hold a million dollars in position. 
um, per day. Compare that with the short rate, which is non literally non-existent. I don't know what's going on over there, but you can practically short coins for free as far as interest is uh, is concerned, and which is just so. This is also just a major thing from the market dynamics, saying that the bear market, like you want to see this the opposite way, essentially. Uh, so this is quite concerning, uh, and we have about 26,000 open shorts, but really, you know, two and a half thousand, oh wow, only two and a half thousand of those are, are hedged, so we really have 23,000 open shorts versus 32 and a half thousand open longs. That is a pretty damn big imbalance, um, so I, I would be concerned about that. I certainly would be concerned about that. So overall, Bitcoin in this range right over here, taking all those things in context, yeah, I would say that it's more likely, especially in an overall bear market, where which we've been in for you know over a year now, it's more likely to break to the downside than to the upside. But hey, until things actually you know start moving in that direction, it's all just mental masturbation. And again, price action comes first. Do we break you know that critical area to the downside first? And I want to make this very, 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 very. Uh, clear that 3250 must break in order for me to start looking at those ideas to, to, to more downside. Um, although I do believe strongly it will break. Remember, uh, the only way that I really changed my mind is, is going off that weekly that we looked at earlier. So yeah, um, again, going back on over here to the CMEs, they did close the week at uh, 3430. They actually closed on that high note, um, right where spot charts got rejected. So if Bitcoin does rally back up there, which typically things do, you know, in a, in a bear flag, you will get that third rally, typically speaking, it's probably gonna be a sell on the next pass. So if Bitcoin, if, if Bitcoin is opening up right around there uh, on Sunday, when CME futures go back online at 6 p.m. Eastern time, well, that's probably a nice trade, I'd imagine. Um, what else do we have? All right, let's go check out how GBDC did. GBDC closed in the day, basically unched, but up a little bit. But uh, but more importantly, another rejection on the hourly uh, after breaking this rising channel to the downside. And look at the overall feeling of this. This guy, this guy does have a measure move, and that would be pointing down towards 255, which again, you know, that would essentially equate to what on spot charts? Well, the area that we just looked at in the mid 2000s. Uh, low 2000s actually so again as long as we are as long as gbdc is below this four dollar and 12 cent region i am you know this is technically a breakage of pattern and uh, while we don't necessarily have the reaction or volume confirmation just yet it is certainly not a good sign certainly not a good sign uh, let's go check out uh let's go check out mr ripples how's he doing he had a nice rally the other day god damn it i keep I always, I always do that. Sorry about that, guys. I know that's annoying. Um, Mr. Ripples, uh, again, you know, this is why the higher time frames will not lead you astray. Nothing was ever changed. As long as you're below 34 and a half cents, nothing's changed for Mr. Ripples at all whatsoever. You have some very nasty, you have some extremely nasty setups on this guy. Um, I mean, even more importantly, as long as you're below 32 and a half cents, uh, it's a really hard chart to love. I mean, this is disgusting, but it's just like Bitcoin until you actually break this lower support at 28 cents or a little bit above 28 cents, you know, don't really have too much to be talking about, although there, there ain't too much holding you up from the mid teens if that were to happen. Um, so yeah, as long as you're below 34 and a half cents, extremely bearish extremely bearish. If you can get back above there, then yeah, then we can talk about some new ideas. Um, Stellar over here, Stellar back on its lows, making new lows. Again, people talking about bullish divergence on this. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy? Like, uh, I do not understand this. This is insane. This is insanity. Pete, like, what makes me a little bit discouraged about the bear market and how long it, it, it could perhaps take is the fact that we still have like, you know, scam IC, not scam ICOs, like the BT, the BitTorrent token, you know, it's not necessarily a scam. Like the, the CEO quite literally came out and said, this will not work. And people still bought it, sells out 7 million in, in minutes, right? That's concerning. <laughs> That's very concerning. Um, so shit like this, I mean, people thinking shit like this is, like this is a good sign. This is not a good sign. This is not a good sign at all. Um, I mean, I'm trying to find something. Uh, ADX DMI just signaled a short entry. Well, not just signaled, just signaled it right over here actually. But uh, overall, I mean, maybe you're on support right over here. I mean, if you really want to squint your eyes and, and make a, I mean, two two day two day uh, just just demolished it actually. Just ran right through it. And this is not even that big. That is, this is not even that important of a support. Although we will have an area right over here, it looks like right around uh, six. Oh wow, six point nine cents. That's awesome. 
Uh, I hope that that one really holds. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, this thing is just walking its way down. It's just, I mean, this is like, this is why I also hate wedges. Look, look at this. You have this beautiful wedge right over here. Everyone's playing that, talking about going back to, you know, ten, a, a dollar or whatever it is. Uh, nope, bull trap right over here. You know, you get the breakout. Everyone gets on the breakout. But no, that's just used by the market movers, by the people with a lot of money to actually just dump their fucking bags and distribute all over your bullish bungholes. And down fails the sport. Down retests fail. Down death cross fail. Down more lows. But we have some bullish divergence, baby. So you know what that means? Can't go lower, bro. It's like, wow. Bro, I've went on to Investopedia for like two weeks now, all right? I've been reading about the relative strength indicator, all right? I've been reading about the fucking kimchi and the goddamn Ichimokus and the Elliot Rave and the <laughs> fractal <laughs> strategies. <laughs> Sorry, I don't really hate uh, Ichimoku, but uh, <laughs> you know what, man? When the RSI gets into this zone right over here, you know what? RSI gets into this zone, it ain't going lower. That's right, baby. It can't go lower, bro. We're going up. It's like, all right, congrats. Well, good luck with that one. You're going to find that in trending markets, your oscillators will fucking lie to you. Um... So yeah, a lot of people, first time in their bear market, they are going to have, they're going to learn perhaps the hard way that uh, maybe it's not so. Uh, Litecoin right over here, a uh, uh, little bit of a different, different look actually. Um, not looking like most of the other things right now. Interestingly enough, uh, maybe something's going on. I'm guessing that there's some sort of a news. I heard that they rebranded or some shit like that. Or I mean, that's like not really. <laughs> it's a fundamental. Bro, like Mrs. Litecoin? You're going to just disrespect Mrs. Litecoin? <laughs> she is, have you seen Mrs. Litecoin's fundamentals? She's in a whole new color now. <laughs> We're going up, baby. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still, the trading range, it's it's literally right in the middle of this trading range right over here, right over here which, you know, yeah, it is looking better than most things right now. Not, not uh, slumping down to end the day. But uh, as long as you're above thirty dollars, don't really want to talk about too much more downside. As long as you're b below thirty-four and a half dollars, don't really talk, don't really want to talk about too much upside. If it, if it does break, you know, if the other majors break down, this one probably breaks down with it. If the other majors break up, which I think is a little bit unlikely, uh, and when I say break up, I mean like above four thousand, then this thing probably breaks back up, you know, into, into like the fifty-dollar range. But for now, you know, just literally right in the middle over there. Uh, this one's yeah, it's kind of doing its own thing actually. Uh, let's go check out uh, Mr. Buterall. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Mr. Buterall uh, printing a nice, uh, <laughs> what do you want to call it? It's a doji-ish dildo. It's not really a doji dildo. People call this a spinning dildo. It's not like a spinning top or a spinning bottom. But to me, this is like, you know, this to me is, I read this as a rejection of this resistance right over here. We don't even need to put them in to know. Um, but we can we can do it. I, I basically look at it as a, as a front run of the six when it, again, remember, keeping that more bearish uh, pressure on from a Fibonacci perspective. Uh, lower time frames right over here, about to give up the 21 exponential in the next 39 minutes. If we end here or lower, two hour Stokes just crossing down. What about four hour? Four hour crossing up, three hour three hour eh, still still up as well and four hour six hour down so we are seeing a little bit of interesting things in these uh, time frames but again same thing as bitcoin and they have very similar charts right now you know as long as you're below the 618 i'm pretty damn bearish if you do get back above 112 right over here i would actually uh de-risk and probably go to neutral if we get back above the 618 i probably maybe even take a long and look for like 126 ish area maybe even 135 if things got super crazy uh by the same token if you do break this support right over here which is right around 104 and a half then Probably coming down to at least 93, 93 and a half, 94 bucks, something like that right over here. Uh, looks pretty damn bad. Um, still not getting like the full on volume confirmation of a breakdown or anything like that, uh, which is why I think the people looking at this as a head and shoulders are incorrect. Um, but, you know, again, just another lower high right over here so far uh, or has been confirmed. I am. Uh, it has not been confirmed actually. So, yeah, a little bit, little bit more lenient on that one in comparison to Mr. Bitcoin over here, uh, which has. So yeah, six hour, uh, yeah, last six hour did not, did not give up the, uh, 10 simple. So fair enough, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, very little has changed in the last, uh, 
in the last, what is it, like 24 hours. Yeah, Bitcoin did have a little bit of a move uh, to the top of this range. But, you know, in the overall context of a, of a bear, or sorry, of a bear flag, you know, rising channel, typically more likely to break out to the downside. Well, it's going to likely be rejected. So, again, um, I'm going to leave you off with that today. Uh, just to confirm my positions once again, I think it's very important to verify yourself. I have a very small leftover position. I, I got rid of the most of this when I woke up this morning. Just take profits on that, especially when it's a weekend. You typically don't see like big breakouts or breakdowns during a weekend. You typically see stop hunts, which, you know, I'd actually, I'd be more interested in like trying to catch myself if I can, if it can be done. Um, but yeah, overall, the, the lower time frames are pretty damn clear. As long as we're above, you know, 30, uh, 33.69-ish area, don't want to get too damn bearish. If it does break down below there, that's still not time to get like super bearish as uh, 32.50 is the big is the big trigger for that for me. By the same token, to the upside, if Bitcoin gets back above 34.80, I'd want to be completely neutral. If it gets back above the 618 at 35, you know, 30-ish area, I'd want to maybe even consider taking a little bit of a long as I don't see too much stopping from the 36.50, uh, 3700-ish range. Um, that, I think that's going to do it for today. Again, wishing you well from Helsinki, Finland. How, hope you're having a beautiful Saturday day. Hope it's filled with a little bit less snow because it's literally like a blizzard all day, every day here. It's insane. I look outside and there's no there's no air. It's just snow. It's just snow everywhere. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. I actually really enjoy the snow. Um, uh, no pun intended, but uh, but the actual snow. I think it's quite beautiful in the city. It's, it really just looks amazing with when it's covered in a blanket. So again, um, wishing you well, and uh, hope this one finds you well. I'll be back on tomorrow, most likely, unless there's like some crazy price action later today. Probably be taking the day off. Um, so yeah, uh, take care, and I'll see you guys soon.